how lacking in boundaries lowers a man's interest. This is clear with Wonder Woman single mom Sandy. She gives over to whatever it is that her men in this case need. She has a fiance that is now an ex because he left her four days before walking down the aisle. Yet she still feels a need to be nice and give over to what he wants. We get into the why that is for Sandy and if you are in a situation where you know you are giving too much, this episode will help you to create boundaries around what it is that will inspire a man's interest, which is not giving him everything he wants. That's what we're all about here on Make Him Wonder, for you to understand through these coaching conversations what it is that works best with men. And we get there with Sandy. She has the inner knowledge that her cultural norms, her programmed beliefs, and her way of behaving with both her ex-fiance and her new man are not going to get her what she desires and deserves. So let's not delay for you to listen, learn, and level up with Sandy. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love. You've given me some great guidance and direction, and now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit?, how a man decides to make you the one. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. My guest today is 51-year-old Sandy. Sandy was engaged to 52-year-old Eric, who is bipolar. Just four days before their wedding date, Sandy reports that Eric canceled the wedding, stating that he wanted to date others. But now the two are back talking. Since being heartbroken, however, Sandy has gone back online and has met a new man, Ryan. Ryan lives in a neighboring state, and the two have been messaging and talking for about six weeks, and he has agreed to come to her state for a meeting. But Sandy is torn, as she still has feelings for Eric. Therefore, she comes on Make Him Wonder today to ask if I feel she should give Give a bipolar man another chance when he did what he did and left her right before the wedding and generally how she should sort out her feelings and situation with these two men. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Paula. Absolutely. So this is a unique situation that you find yourself in. How long ago was the wedding canceled? The wedding was canceled about three months ago now, in about three months. Mm -hmm. And tell me a bit about your relationship with him, how you got engaged, and how it was that just four days before the wedding date, he said what he said. Okay. So Eric treated me very well. He pursued me. He We had fun together. We enjoyed a lot of the same things. He said nice things to me. He served me and was enjoy, enjoyed being with me. So I really did not pressure him in any way to be a part of my life. He put a lot of effort in, which I appreciate, and I enjoyed it too. How did you meet? A dating app. Which one? It's called Match. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he liked my profile and invited me to join him for a date, something we both liked to do. So we went on a very early morning hike and then we went to breakfast. Mm -hmm. How long were you talking on the app before this date? Oh, probably just maybe a week, not very long that we talked on the app. 
that's a good thing. The first meeting was not the best to set you up as the woman to be the most desired and elusive. If you've listened to me at all, you may know that I don't recommend any kind of meeting that is a walk, a hike, certainly breakfast. It is something you do with a friend. It is something that is not romantic in nature and does not set the man up to have the most interest possible. But you got to a certain place whereby you actually made a wedding date. How long were you together before he proposed? Uh, it seems rather quick. So it was about five months, and that seems very quick. For both of us, it was a second marriage, and we don't live extremely far away, and we weren't having sex. So I guess that's my short answer. So let's unpack that a little bit. You meet and then you start dating. What was your relationship like? How often did you see him? You say you weren't terribly far apart, but what does that mean exactly? Uh, distance from where we live. So it was a, just a 20 minute drive from where we live, each of us. How long has he been divorced? Uh, I think he had been divorced about three years. And tell me about that situation, meaning why, and how many children and their ages? Oh, yes. I, what he tells me is it, he felt like it wasn't a good fit anymore, so to speak. That's as much as I can get out of it. And his children are married, and he has one grandchild from each of them, and they're they're very doing very well. They're college graduates, working, living independently from parents. Got it. Tell me, how long was he married before divorcing? I think about 22 years, 22 to 25, somewhere in there. So it's interesting because the details are a little sketchy. Why is that? Well, the details of the time frame of his marriage, uh, he told me exactly how long he was married, but it's just my personality um, structure, the way my brain remembers, and I don't remember the, the numbers of his, the length of his marriage very well. I see. Tell me, before I ask about his bipolar illness, what your relationship during the five months was like. It, it was good. Um, it was a little, he was a little more sensitive than my first marriage, the, the man I was married to. And so that was something for me to kind of be interested in, take note or be curious about. So maybe he would get a little frustrated and I couldn't understand why for me I wasn't putting the two and two together that was very clear to him of what he wanted me to see. So he would leave for a moment or express his feelings in a way that at first I didn't understand. When did he tell you about his diagnoses and is it actually a diagnosed situation? I believe he's being truthful about it. Um, he receives care and medication for it. Um, he told me early on about it, uh, the first few dates. And how did it show up, if at all, in in the relationship other than him being a little more sensitive and what you just told me about him needing to take time away in the moment when something might come up how else did it show up that's really in that four month time really about really what I saw um, that's about it um, one time we had a call when he was upset he started saying some things and I said could when he calmed down could you repeat what you said because I can't quite remember. At the beginning of the conversation, he couldn't remember what he said, but towards the end, he could repeat what he said. And I said, oh, yes, I remember you saying that. Oh, yes, I remember you saying that. Um, I was just trying to be curious and understanding and open to seeing where he was coming from. And um, so he's verbal. Um, my previous relationship, my man was not verbal, very verbal. So this was enticing to you that he could relate verbally in a better way than your previous relationship. Yes. And before I get into more about your relationship with Eric, how long were you married? What's your situation with your children and your ex? 
I was married for 30 years and two of it was a separation and my kids to me they seem like they're doing well. I have two college graduates, one's married, have another in college and I have two at home. So I have a I have a, a lot of people to love that are in my children. Nice. How old are the ones that are at home? I have a 17 year old at home and a 13 year old at home and my 20 year old is in college and my 23 year old is a graduate married and my 27 year old is single college graduate. And why after 30 years did you divorce? Uh, there was a significant age difference in my relationship with my first husband. About 10 years, I was 19 when I met him. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like our 27th wedding anniversary. I asked him why he loved me and he didn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Why he married me and he didn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. So I left the marriage. Were there more discussions about it or attempts at rectifying things? No, I I had some um, therapy and different um, assessments of my personality and my first, my husband's, my first husband I'm divorced from are personality types and I don't know how to explain this. We just didn't fit the profile of um, the type of people that would be married to each other. But you were for 30 years. Right. So give me some more context to understand well, I was 19, so I was barely above. I mean, I was legally able to be married, but as far as emotionally, socially making those type of decisions for myself at 19, there's some, I believe, scientific background that our brains aren't fully developed till 21. And I felt like there was just not a good place for me to be deciding to be married to a man 10 years older than me at 19. Okay, but then you were 29, and then you were 39. You see, 10 years, you were 29. 10 years later, you were 39. And there were all those years in between. Yes. What was going on that it happened when you were, how many years ago was this that you divorced? 49, 50, 49. So about two and a half, three years ago. Uh -huh. uh, from what you're telling me, Due to a conversation whereby he could not verbalize what was going on for him, you just both ended it and you got some therapy. Did you ever try to reconcile? Did he ever try? No. Okay. And then you get with someone who tells you they are bipolar. I'm not exactly sure how it played out for you, but he was medicated. Yeah. May I ask why the relationship did not progress sexually and why you decided not to have sex? Moral standard, religious okay. belief. Mm -hmm. Did he share them? Yes. So when you then got this abruptly, four days before the wedding, I want to date others, was there an actual engagement? Uh, yes. How did he propose? Uh, we picked out a ring and then he chose when to ask me to marry him and he chose the location it was thoughtful he did it at a place that had a nice view and also bought me roses and asked me to marry him how long between the engagement and when you had a wedding date a month so it was busy because I have two minors at home and I work and I'm a college student as well and I have a home to take care of. Mm -hmm. Is your ex still involved in your minor children's lives at least? Yes. He, we work well together. I'm primary parent and he takes all of his parent time responsibly and he pays his child support and we negotiate and talk over things. We work through our just taking apart our 30 years of marriage and putting it in a legal document without a fight. Okay. We got paperwork and we talked it through, took multiple appointments with each other, it took two years because of how long we'd been married, but we hired no attorneys to fight for us or against us. Great. So four days before you are to be married, was this like a justice of the peace kind of thing or did you actually have some kind of event scheduled? 
we sat down and talked through the details, what guests would be invited, who would officiate, the location, what food we would serve, where our out-of-town guests would stay, where we would stay, what attire would be appropriate for our desires. We talked through everything except the marriage license. Is that significant in terms of the story? Okay, tell me. So he made the marriage license appointment, told me when it was, told me to be there. And we were so busy towards the actual date of the wedding with work and school and for me school and with my minors and involving family and and a few, just a few friends to participate and me being a bride and having a photographer. I suggested to him that we go through the, the ceremonial type aspects with all of our family there and get our license the next business day because it would make one less thing for me to do and I could make sure I found shoes and had my hair done and was ready. So take me through how he ended it, exactly what he said, what you said, and how it played out. He said if I didn't show up to get the marriage license at the time when he said, on the day when he said, it was over. This was on a text or call or how was that? Texting because we were both at work some of the time and I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't get to the phone sometimes at work. Uh And what did you say? Well, I don't like to be threatened, so I just said, well, it's your choice what you want to do that way in a text, and was hoping we'd have time to talk in person. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, was this a typical kind of thing for him to do, meaning with other things, like I need you to show up here, and I need you to do X, Y, Z, and if you don't, it's either my way or the highway? Was there indication of that prior to this event? It happened once. He wanted me to meet the people who were officiating our ceremony before the wedding. And I asked, I said, I'm really worn out. I'm tired. Can we just meet him after, like, meet him at the wedding, but, like, spend time with them because they were his personal friends after the wedding. Because it felt like leading up to the wedding, life just got busier and busier and busier. And I didn't put two and two together, and he got really upset that day and kind of took off mad. So there was one other time that happened, but other than that, he was really supportive, really loving, communicated well, pulled things together well, solved problems well. Okay, play it out for me then. You don't go to the license appointment that he made? Right. What happened then? Um, I just let him choose, and I said, well, if that's your choice, then you can do that. And I don't have a purpose for an engagement ring. I'm not getting married. So we both lost deposits on um, wedding venue vendors, so to speak. He did some, and I did some. So I, I allowed him to take the ring back. I just felt like I had no purpose for it but to put it in a drawer. So I said, you, you could have the ring back. I just... It, it, It's really your choice on how you feel about this. So there was really no discussion or even argument or stating your case of not being able to show up at that particular time? Or did he take it that, okay, if you're not doing that, you're not serious about getting married? I'm not clear. Well, um, we've been able to talk then, and I was able to call the, the license, the marriage license department, and they explained that this is not unusual for people to forget to get a marriage license or for it to happen after a a wedding party, so to speak. Sometimes, like our wedding was on a holiday, and so sometimes people can't get in because they're only open during business hours, a typical government business hours. They told me this happens from time to time, so it's not a big deal. He didn't talk to anybody. He just looked at the website, and to him, he just thought differently, I guess, and I can't really say exactly what he thought, but he he just thought I should have supported him and what he wanted and made it happen. So when it didn't, it was that cut and dry of, okay, since we didn't get this license, let's divvy up the deposits we made and that's it. Is that how it went down? 
it went down like that and yeah but you know i was opening open to still not being angry because i just thought he's going to see that was silly so he actually took like a week off and came back into my life and i hosted him for thanksgiving which was the next holiday so you need to tell me how it went down mm -hmm. that when a man breaks off an engagement four days prior due to this kind of silliness, in a sense, and says he wants to date others, mm -hmm. you would start talking to him a week later. Right. I guess I just, yeah, it should be a big deal. I just see it as if he thought about it for long enough, he'd realize that was a poor choice. Like, nobody's going to believe that getting the marriage license the day after a wedding party is reason to break up with someone and that he'll realize he, he um, kind of dropped the ball, so to speak. Yeah, so I guess it's my problem in some ways that I'm so forgiving. So the question is begged, did he realize it and come back to you on bended knee? Me for forgiveness. I think he's regretful. Okay, but that's not what I asked. Yeah. Because how you think is not the issue. It's what did he actually do? He said, I miss you. I still want to marry you. I want to make this work. And you did what? I was open to the idea. So he came back and you did what, the two of you? Uh, we started dating again, and then he asked if he could come to Thanksgiving with my family, and I said, sure. Mm -hmm. Where are things now? It's about three months later. Um, he took a break again, in which I wasn't expecting. That's when it really broke my heart, I think. Uh, he took a break for about a month and a half through December and part of January, and... What do you mean, break? Like, that's when he was really um, dating. Even after, so after he called after the wedding, he called up the wedding. He came back for a couple weeks and didn't really start dating until the December holiday was in full swing. And then in January, he came back again. Were you talking to him or texting with him or having anything to do with him in this time frame of him leaving again? I did text him or from time to time through the December holiday. Saying what? Um, just memories. I didn't expect him to come back. And he does. How? He comes back saying he's learned some things and what would I be open to? And I said I'd be open to dating. And what happened? Um, we sometimes talk or see each other, but then I can t I was already back out dating, and so I was dating casually, like, three different guys by then. Mm -hmm. So what are you feeling about your situation in being here and talking to me right now? What are you feeling? Well, I don't fully understand the ramifications of bipolar. Um, I've looked at it a bit online from just that point of view, but I think that could be hard in a relationship. I feel like it has this very beautiful side to it that Eric is so good at loving and communicating, but then it has this other side that can send my heart into palpitations that hurt. And um, but then again, I'm I'm still dating others, and so at some point I have to make a decision and uh, decide what to do, whether to keep pursuing you know new relationships that might be have different challenges or that are new to me or yeah or let myself go down that path again with eric and his bipolar well i actually don't think the bipolar is of any big influence here from what i'm hearing that that's not the issue okay you did not tell me anything when i asked how it presented itself it was in any way much different than any other relationship unless there's something you're not remembering or you want to tell me now no um that is it. The only other thing that um, I think overthinking and um, can come into play with this and sometimes affect the person's employability. So this person sometimes, you know, may bring those same ideas into a, a workplace where being worried and overthinking a situation might cause job stressors for that person. Is there some kind
kind of employment thing going on with him? It, not his entire work career, but um, more in the last five years, maybe. He struggled a little bit more with consistent employment. And from where I sit, if that were the case, a man who was dedicated to you and wanted to marry you would be saying, especially because he is good at verbalizing, something a la, I'm not in the right place to marry you. I don't feel like I can provide Right. I don't feel really great about myself. So if he used the excuse of the not showing up when he wanted for the marriage license, when he came back, it would be more about that. But you said that he said he wanted to date others. True. He, in December, he wanted to date others. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really compute anything about the employability being the real issue. Okay. But what I'm hearing is that you are someone really sweet, are not someone to ruffle feathers or cause issues, meaning more passive in your personality, very accepting of things. Is that true? I think so. And I think it's part of the culture I live in and grew up in. Mm -hmm. Is it a very strict religion? Um, I think it's part of our everyday life. I, whether it's strict, I don't know. Um, choice is a big key factor in the religion. And so that is why I had full support in my divorce from my religious community, because choice is such a big factor. Explain that to me. I don't understand what you mean about whose choice. Um, individual choice is a huge um, religious belief. Mm-hmm so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you want to disclose the particular religion? Uh, probably not. It's too easy for people to run with that in a direction that may not be healthy. <laughs> okay, so that's fine. I understand that. What I don't understand is, and, and forgive me for my ignorance of it, but typically in most all religions generally, divorce is not something that is seriously supported, so to speak. So I'm, I'm confused as to the choice issue. So after 30 30 years, you can just make a choice. Right. Okay, we'll go with that. But we were talking about the what I'm hearing in you, which is a passivity okay. that may be hurting you. And, and I think that that's probably true. Okay. Is it that you've been acculturated to accommodate what a man wants, or he's the leader, so to speak? What he wants comes kind of first and you acquiesce or take more of a subordinate role in a relationship? I do think there's some culture that way, but I did break up with someone recently who had a, a slightly different culture than me and um, my answer to him when I said I can't progress in this relationship anymore with you was that he wanted me to serve him so much. I said I can't serve you anymore. Um, I feel like it's enough. So I dated him like a month and a half and um, I don't feel like his idea of me serving him was my cultural fit. I feel like it was his personal desire and I felt like it just didn't help me be who I wanted to be because I have interests and talents and a career and, you know, and getting a master's degree and ho hobbies. And I, I did I did say that to someone I broke up with. I felt like every time I was with them, it was to serve them in a dating situation. Okay, but we're talking about Eric here, right? And potentially Ryan. It's very hard for me to get a handle on exactly, of course, what's been happening, except for the fact that we go just to the mechanics of men and how you just acquiesced to what Eric did or did not do rather than you standing firm in I am not going to be disrespected in that way by publicly you had this wedding set and he opted out rather than working it through and a week later he's back and then ostensibly like a month or so later he pulls it again right I'm disrespecting myself mm -hmm. now, what are the factors that play into that well I think it's easier for me in the beginning of a relationship to say no and this isn't what I want, but he got me to the place because he pursued me that I committed to him in my heart and fell in love with him. Mm -hmm. So I, like with Ryan, the other 
person in this equation. I did a really good job. We've been texting for two months. And I said to Ryan, he's the one from out of state. I said, Ryan, we could be wasting our time. We've never met. We've we've talked, video chatted, and texted for two months. I said, there are a lot of women now could go date. You could be happy. I need my time to take care of me. So you need to come see me so we can decide. And he's coming tonight. He's driving two and a half hours to see me. Okay. And so I feel like I do better in the beginning of a relationship, but I feel like with Eric, it was harder because I fell in love and I committed to marry him. Mm -hmm. And this is where we all, generally speaking, share the experience because women bond through time and sex, although sex wasn't a part of this, but your heart was involved. Mm -hmm. You did commit to him and your programming subconsciously was that you did not want your love interest to be gone. True. And this is where you will need to do a bit of work and focus for yourself because whether it's Eric, Ryan, whomever, without changing that, it's very hard to what I call mechanic the issue or issues and do what is necessary to guide the man to fly right. And that's what I'm hearing has happened. Yes. So you can tell me where things are with Eric now. Mm -hmm. And I can certainly tell you about those mechanical ways to switch that for yourself because there's a lot of backtracking here because he has lost a lot of the respect and putting you a value because of accepting him back yeah. twice. Mm -hmm. And well, let's go from there. So tell me where things are with him now before we get into Ryan. What does he believe about this relationship? What have you discussed? How much are you seeing him? What have you accepted again with him going off and dating and coming back? And we'll talk about that in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, Relationship Evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman, because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. He says he's not dating. Um, I talked to him about if he, he's going to be in my life, he needs to open up again to his friends and family and tell them he's dating me. He's still not to that level where he's opening up, but yet he's in my life with my family and my community. So my family, my neighbors, my friends see him as a part of my life when I see him maybe once or twice a week. So what do you think I'm going to say about that? He needs to show the same commitment on the other side. And if you've listened here, I assume you have to this podcast, have you? Yes. So because it's going to be more helpful if you say it, what do you think I'm going to tell you needs to be done given what you just laid out? I think you better tell me. Okay. You just laid out very nicely that you again, have accepted the less than, the devaluing, the disrespect, and opened up your life for him to come in and give you the crumbs, mm -hmm. and he does not do the same. What does that tell you? He's not showing me commitment that he may take off again. No doubt. No doubt. He's getting all the good of you, and truly, you've allowed him to devalue you in that way. Mm-hmm. 
you are showing your hand in this game of cards, so to speak, in that I want you and need you so much. This is my self-concept that I need to be pleasing you and want you in any way, shape, or form, and I'll take whatever. Right. And that likely is a program you're running on. You were programmed with that very early on in your life, birth to age seven. Mm-hmm. It's what your experience of love is. Right. And it sounds to me, Sandy, that you actually had this kind of disregard or distance even in your marriage as well. True. Because you were playing out the subconscious programming of what love is. We all have a programmed experience of what love is. It has nothing to do with what the word actually means, what anybody else's experience of it is. It truly is our programmed experience from birth to age seven. And if we do not feel completely attended to, unconditionally loved, whereby we don't have to be any way, do anything special to get love, meaning complete attention and care from our main caregivers. Mm -hmm. We are programmed to have the experience of love you are living out. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The beauty is you can change that. I can. Absolutely. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. And it doesn't matter that he is bipolar. I'm not hearing anything whereby this is untenable because of that issue. Okay. He is following protocol, has handled it in terms of severity. I haven't heard that during this time that you've seen him that he has had any kind of episodes. Mm Mm-hmm. So not really the issue. It's that you are showing him, this is how I value myself. Right. So therefore, he will continue to do it because, of course, he values you to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But until you as a woman say, either I'm chosen or not chosen. Right. And if I'm not, I choose to not have you in any way in my life. Right. That's what gets the man to actually feel what he needs to feel in order to commit. He has not truly made that decision and he took an out that I'm sure you have played around in your mind so many times how it really went down that four days before the wedding, he opted out. Right. But if you have any kind of programming, which I dare say you probably do, Mm -hmm. whereby you're feeling subconsciously, not consciously, because consciously you know there wasn't anything you did to precipitate this. Right. But subconsciously, you're living out that maybe you're not quite enough, you displeased your love interest. You see, it's coming from a very deep place whereby it's our baby mind. So there's no intellectualization of it. There's no rationalization of it. It's simply a programmed experience of love. Mm -hmm. So you have work to do to break that pattern because whether it's him or Ryan or anyone else, you will continue to play that out. Right. So you can absolutely do that. And there are steps which you will need to take to regain his respect and his valuing you and all of it that you will really need to do in order to up-level this and have a chance at getting him back to where he was. In the meantime, we can talk about Ryan, your interest in him, Mm-hmm. And whether or not you want to move forward with that, depending upon your meeting. Right. He's how old? He's 57. Divorced, never married. What's his deal? He's divorced a couple of times. He went ahead and told me that. And I think he's been single. Like I said, I don't remember exact. He did tell me 10 years, maybe. I asked and, him if he's more of an introvert, and he said yes. And why did it take so long for him to make the drive to see you, do you think? Or what has he said? I don't know. But for me, I don't know what he was thinking or what, what's in, going on with him. I think his job keeps him very busy. He was back east for two weeks during that time for training. And but I just can't keep, I couldn't keep texting and just talking on the phone with him because that's not a relationship. I won't know if, and he won't know if we want to continue talking and texting if we don't meet in person. Absolutely. So let's just cut to it. 
Mm-hmm. Where are you meeting him tonight? Um, he's coming to my hometown and taking me to dinner. Okay. So I want to give you just some thumbnail suggestions about this so that you don't get too sucked in with it. Okay. First of all, on a scale of 1 to 10 right now, not having met him, where's your interest level in him? 1 being nothing, 10 being over the top. What number would you give it? Um, probably like a 7 or 8 right now. Um... The things he likes to do, his interests and hobbies are similar to mine. The things that we would do together on a weekend or the things that we would do in retirement are similar. Okay, so I hope that this talk today will infuse you tonight to show that no matter that interest level for you, if it stays at a 7, 8, that you are not investing anything because of the distance and the situation. Mm-hmm. And when I say show it, what I mean is an essence coming from you that if you have a nice time, you do, but you show that you can take it or leave it. Mm. If he futures you, if you know what I mean by that, he says things like, oh, well, I'll do this and we'll do that. And, you know, when we do this and that together or anything like that, you take it with a grain of salt. And a tip here for anyone, when a man does that in the first meeting, many nice women like you, Sandy, because you sound lovely, will be agreeable because that's pretty much how we interact in certainly the States, Europe. We think about it, for example, Americans generally, and when I say Americans, The culture in the broadest sense of the word is one of agreement. We are descendants of Britain, and I mean as a nation. Yes. And unlike other cultures, socially, we get along, coexist under a guise of agreement, and it tends to play out with women and men in dating. And again, this is a broad generalization, but if a man futures, you say, yes, uh uh-huh, mm-hmm, and agree. Right. The tip is, oh, maybe, we'll see, huh, Mm mm-hmm, but not, okay, an uh uh-huh in agreeing terms and not skeptical terms, because when we do that, we don't allow for the man to go through the challenge that will truly make him want it. Right. So that's a tip for you tonight. As far as Eric and where you go from here, that's going to be harder for you. Yes. Because you are in love, you are invested, and your programming is going to pull you to do things to please him. Right. And what I do with my work with clients is in an attempt to override the programming so that you don't continue something that clearly is showing by how this has deteriorated and backslid doesn't work. Right. You giving all of yourself, all of your wonderfulness, everything about you has not resulted in him giving you the same. Right. So you will need to be reprogramming your thoughts because your feelings are going to stay where they are. But we can put the thoughts in via affirmations and thought behavior along with working with our brain state of theta, which is right before sleep and upon waking up where we're doing sleep meditations to reprogram and get your self-concept up to a place whereby you are more of a worthy opponent in his eyes and that actually will allow him to either step up or truly realize that you are not the one. Yeah, exactly. But if you don't do it because of all your loveliness and wonderfulness, he will continue to play at this, so to speak. Right and not fully commit. To take a man back when he shows you it doesn't matter the reason and you know that it was a a little bit of a ridiculousness Mm -hmm. to call off commitment to you because of a petty thing like that and then you accept him back, well, you're way behind the eight ball. Yes, I am. So that's where your work is going to have to start. And it is all on you with the pillars that I talk about. Raising your self-concept, overriding your subconscious programming with constant spaced repetition of the thoughts you know will 
produce a higher level of thinking and feeling about yourself. And then that makes it easier to behave in a way with him that will have him seeing you as that worthy opponent. I love it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do it. First, absolutely. I want to ask you, does he know that you are meeting and dating anyone else? So when he came back after the Christmas holiday, I mostly just listened to him, what he was going through and all his ideas. And then a week later, I said, you know, when you came back, I was actively dating, texting, talking to four different guys. And he says, I didn't think that was the case. And so I started in the new year. It was really hard to go back. I mean, I wanted to cry that I had to start talking and texting again Mm -hmm. and start over. But so he knew that. And then I did tell him about the one that I called off. But he doesn't know I'm going on a date tonight. No, I haven't told him that. I don't know what to do. I guess I should or something. Because when he came back, I just said, we can start dating because I was already actively texting and communicating with other guys. So I didn't feel like putting him at the level of like ahead of them at that point. I understand. The issue is this. Juggling with men is typically a very bad idea. Okay. Because the male brain deals more in this realm with black and white, on or off, stop or go, yes or no. And these mixed signals, it doesn't serve us ever not to be in the realm of black and white in this way. Meaning, here's how things would have been best. And I say this not for you to look back and say, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, but more so that you understand where you go from here. Exactly. So he says to you four days before the wedding, you either come now or it's off. Right. And you say, basically, well, that's your choice. If that's the hill you're going to die on, okay, knock yourself out. Right. Seems a rather ridiculous thing, but he was wanting any excuse. Right. So when he comes back after you have to go through all that you went through, even losing money, yeah. it is no. I am not at all inclined. There was no valid, really good reason. This was an excuse. I wish you the best. Please respect my wishes that I don't want to be in contact. Now, that's really hard because it's not what your heart wants. Right. But it's what the male needs because it's black and white, stop or go, on or off, yes or no. And that is the only thing that gets the man to deal with the feelings in a way to make a decision. And he needs to feel the loss, the pain, the remorse, the regret, all of it that was thwarted. And it is why you have gotten the results, behaviors, and all that he's saying about dating and doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So continuing like you are with him will get you more of this. And at this juncture, you would want to do something proactive in you taking the reins. And it's one of the hardest things for a woman to do and to follow through with it until the man gets into his feelings and truly changes and comes back with such remorse, such a resolve that it is absolutely unknown that he will be committed. Yeah. It's why I work with women in my Lure Him Back program and approach, because this is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. A, because it goes against your programming. Yeah. B, it's not going with your feelings. It's going against your feelings. Yeah. But one of the things that helps so much is under the umbrella of manifestation, because you have to live in the knowing that you are the operant power in your life. Mm -hmm. the God particle in you, you can manifest it and your self-concept can be raised to a level whereby you live in the knowing that you are worthy of it and you're going to have it. Right. That takes work. Right. It's not something that is just theoretical. People get a lot from this podcast, of course, but it's not something that without the actual doing and the guiding of it typically works because it's, like I said, one of the hardest things you'll ever do. It's the most change you'll ever make in your personal life. 
Mm -hmm. But it is really necessary because whether it's him, Ryan, anyone else that you would truly have feelings for, wherever you go, there you are. Wherever you go, there goes your programming. Right. So I hear that you absolutely get it. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the start. Right. What questions do you have for me? None. None. It's been great. I mean, it's um, been good. I'm kind of glad that we spoke now rather than um, a time when I was more emotionally upset about it. It seems like I might be a little not connected to my emotions, but um, when I had to turn that corner in January and start dating again, I really had to let go of that hope for that relationship. And so, you know, had we had spoken earlier, I probably would have been a sobbing mess. I think I get it. Yeah. You don't have to let go mm -hmm. of the desire for him mm -hmm. being the one. You have to do things differently in order to get it. And I like how you said that it go it will go against what I want to do in my heart, and mm -hmm. but it will get the result that I need. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, it will go against your programming to be pleasing him. Yes. So that's where it's going to be really rough for you. My suggestion would be this. Wondering what I'm going to tell Sandy she mustn't say tonight to Ryan and what she must do beyond tonight that will set her up for being connected to her feelings and to get the commitment she desires and deserves. In the rest of this episode, I outline exactly what Sandy needs to be doing to lessen her anxiety and to create what she desires with Eric so that both of them can move forward in a healthy and happy way. And because I want you to free yourself from what is holding you back, from getting all that you desire and deserve, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, where you can hear the rest of this episode with Sandy, where I give her my approach and coaching on what she can do from this moment on to get all that she desires. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive membership only club of the Making Wonder podcast, where you'll get over 200 ad free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a 6 or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 month membership and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your love life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us, as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what I tell Sandy she needs to do to put herself in the best position to have what she wants with either of the men in her life. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the divine right results you want in your relationship, or how to start dating in a way that guides a potential Mr. Right to do right by you. Go now to the 80 Two zero W O N D E R dot C L U B. That's the eighty twenty wonder dot club. You and your love will be glad you did.